Welcome to Truthzilla. I am Megan sitting here with Scott and Ed. Today we have a very special guest joining us, Billy Ray Valentine of the Infinite Fringe podcast. Thank you so much for yes. joining us. How are you tonight? Man, I'm doing good. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I'm actually uh, awake. Typically, I'm like uh, falling apart at times like this, but I'm, I'm very excited. Thank you for having me, guys. I'm, 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 uh, I've been watching what you guys do, you know, ever since we met. Yeah. Over at a union of the underground. Am I saying that properly? Union of right. the unwanted. The union yeah. of the unwanted. Yeah. And when, when yeah. we met there, and uh, I've been following what you guys do, man. It's it's a, it's a cool it's a cool stuff. You know, it's cool things. And yeah. um, I wanted to make sure I reached out to you guys and, and thank you for for having me on. I, I really appreciate it, man. Thank you so much for coming, man. I'm so happy yeah, to have you. Fans, for yeah, sure. totally. Yeah, definitely. Dude. You do a lot of good work and, podcast. and thanks for the, 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 you know, considering the time difference, man, you're staying up late for it. You know, we're out here in the belly of the beast, as we say over here in Eugene, <laughs> Oregon, um, you know, we, um, just a couple hours South and we, we had Dean Reiner on a couple weeks ago, giving us some perspective up in Portland, man. And it's just like, you know, it's really cool that we have these platforms to kind of reach out and get different perspectives from all yeah. over this thing. You know what I mean? And, and man, talk about the belly of the beast, dude, New York city, man. Jesus. What's what's going on out there? Like, what's been what's your it experience like in New York here? Work right yeah. now. If COVID has kind of calmed down, or yeah, yeah, it, it calmed down quite a bit, right? Like, the hysteria around it has calmed down. A lot of things have calmed down. Um, a lot of people still wear masks, you know, in mm -hmm. Manhattan. Uh, I was in Manhattan. I, let, let, let me explain. Like, I was in Manhattan every day of my life for the last I don't know how many years, and COVID hits. And I'm not there anymore. I live in the Bronx. Yeah, but it's not far, you know, uh, taking a train or, or, a, or a cab or, or driving. It's not, it's not far at all. But uh, I'm not there anymore because of this. There's no real reason for me to go there, sure. you know, and, and everything is shut down. Well, not everything anymore. Some things have opened up, but not, man, this is a, a disaster, man, to be honest with you. They, yeah. Things are just not the way they used to be. I don't think they'll ever, I don't know if they'll ever be that way. Sure. Um, I, I went down, what was that? It, it doesn't seem like it. You have something to say? I'm sorry. Oh, it, no, it doesn't no, 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 seem no. that things will recover. Yeah. I don't think so, man. And it's sad. I, I went down to, to the city last week. Right. And, um, I told the story on the fringe, uh, last weekend because it, it broke my heart. Right. So I, I was, um, on Astor place. That's, uh, lower, you know, the, close to downtown, but not, not exactly. And there's this diner there that I always used to go to, always. And I was like, you know what? Let me get back to it because I don't know when I'm going to be able to go back. And this, is, this diner is packed out at all times, at all times, full of people. And uh, they have five, five freaking tables outside. You know, <laughs> I'm like, damn. You know, so I sit down and I start talking to, to the waiter who is the guy who runs the place for the most part. And he's, you know, serving tables now. And I told him, I'm like, what's going on? You know, how are things going? And he's like, it's horrible. He's like, I'm running a dead business. It's yeah. only a matter of time before we close is what he told me. And I'm mm -hmm. like, no, 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 man. I'm like, don't say that, bro. We're, that's, you know, we got, no, it's not going to happen. And he goes, I just got this letter from the city. And it told me um, outside dining, because there's no inside dining in New York City, right? So outside dining ends on October 31st, right? So when that's over, the letter read, if you survive the winter, oh my. you can go ahead and do outside dining again. Oh, wow. I'm like, wow. no, no, no. You know, to, right now I'm telling the story and I still won't believe it until I see it. Wow. You know, they have to let people back into these restaurants. I mean, I just don't understand it. Yeah, you know, yeah um, rigid winters in New York City. You can't expect people to just uh, eat outside during the winter. Yeah, that's I mean, right. that, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. That's, that's literally what the expectation is at this point. I, I mean, uh, according, according to him, you know, um, and, and I went to another store and uh, it's called Evolution. Mm. They sell all types of really cool stuff, you know, like, you know, skeletons. I got this, uh, this necklace that was, a, it's, a, it's a cobra vertebrae necklace. I've been eyeing it forever, right? So yeah. before COVID hit, I'm like, I'm going to go, I'm going to go get that. And then COVID hit and I never got it. So I, I said, you know, if things clear up, I'll go over there and get it. And, and I did. And she tells me she's 75% down in business, 75%. Oh. And that her, her rent is piling up, you yeah. know, and her landlord is a good guy. So he's allowing her, you know, to, he's like, pay what you, what you can, when you can. Sure. But, um, 
but this isn't getting any better out here, man. It's just freaking not like, I don't know what to say. Like I walk around my neighborhood and, and things were closing down prior to COVID, but now it's like a combination. It's like things that closed down during COVID that will never open up again. Yep. And things that closed down before COVID, you know, and I walked into the city, I was on 86th street, several stores there that are gone now, Barnes and Noble, big stores. They're just gone. And I, I mean, I don't know if they had plans to take off before that, but this might've ex expedited things just a little bit, you know, Absolutely. um, as far as the virus, like in April, you know, we were, you know, I, I don't know. I, I was of the belief that it was not that bad. You know, mm -hmm. I was like, this is, this is nonsense. This don't worry about this. This is what I said in, initially. And uh, then it started knocking on my front door and I changed my tune, you yeah. know, and I, and I did say, I was like, you know, I, I could change my mind on this. I just want to see the, what actually happens, you know? Uh, I mean, there weren't people dying on the street and, uh, and, uh, these hospitals weren't overflowing outside. That was media hype. Yeah. You know, all of that was media hype that there was, there wasn't stuff going on like that, but there were things going on on the inside that we weren't allowed to see. And I, and I know some hospital workers that have told me just horror stories, man, you know, and I know, uh, people that were close to me as a, as a child that uh, they were, they're older, of course, and they have pre-existing conditions. They came down with this thing and it really knocked them out for a bit. You know, thank, thankfully, uh, one person that I know was about to get intubated and she said no. And I think that's the only reason she's still alive. Yeah. So, you know, and, and uh, so that, that's good. But as far as that goes, like that's really calmed down. You know, I mean, I don't think the virus is really anything to be that worried about. I think this is a massive overreaction, what's going on. Yeah, but uh, it was, it was a, a bit scary. You know, New York, man, it's been scary out here, you know, uh, for a while now. With the, the COVID and the riots and the closing, it looks like freaking Mad Max. You know, I mean, I'm exaggerating. It's not like Mad Max, you know, but uh, things, are, things are not what they used to be. I would be so happy to have people come down to New York and show them around. I can't show them anything anymore, really. I'll show you a couple of buildings from the outside, you know, yeah. and I don't know. It's, it's not a good situation, guys. No, man. I'm sorry, man. I mean, I just can't even, can't even imagine, dude, you know. Um, so what is the writing situation like over there? I haven't heard, like, you all you hear is about Portland, 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 right? Like, uh, mm -hmm. how, how intense is that out there? Uh, I mean, if, if there's rioting out here, it's, it's in pockets. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, that's what the mainstream media does, right? It, it's, they hype issues. Yeah, they yep. concentrate on something and hype it, no matter how small it is. And everybody around the world thinks, "Oh my God, New York is burning down." <laughs> it's not. It's not really the case. You know, it's not that bad. Like, I mean, there was rioting. I mean, not. Um, I don't want to minimize that, but yeah. it, it's not. It it doesn't continue. It hasn't continued. And if it has continued, it's only been in pockets. Like not far away from me, uh, Fordham Road, they rioted that entire place and they looted a ton of stuff. Yeah. But that's been done for a long time, yeah. you know, and, but you see little things that pop up here and there. I don't think that's any different from, uh, from a regular day in New York city. You know what I mean? Um, sure. I mean, they weren't breaking into stores, so th that's changed, but, um, it's not, it's not a huge deal. People walk around here and they're fine for the most part. What I get is, you know, people telling me to put on a mask. I do get that quite often. Yeah. You know? and, yeah so, so that, that's the thing that we can, you know, that, uh, is, is uh, prevalent, you know, it, it, it's, it's a thing that happens often, but as far as um, the, these riots, not, not, not so much. Like, I think that's the new extreme sport here in America or aggressive all over the world is just walking up into a store without a mask on, dude. It's yeah. a rush. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> how long can I get? You see other people, they look at you, they look at you and they're like, kind of like, damn, I wish I had the balls to do that. Right. You know, I had a cashier come up to me. Like I was walking up to her the other day. And she was like, looked like I was coming at her with a knife, dude. And like, I was like, no, it's all right. You know, but whatever, whatever, you know, um, done acquiescing. I'm really getting done yeah. with acquiescing, yeah. dude. That's yeah. where I'm at right now. It's crazy. You That's know, great. like, I mean, to, to go into a grocery store, we have to wear a mask, right? We have yeah. to, otherwise you're not getting any food. And this is New York, right? It's not like I can go into my backyard and pick some berries. It's right. not happening. <laughs> so right. I have to go to the supermarket and put on a mask. Right. Yep. Um, but, um, you know, it's not even me trying to be defiant. You know, I mean, sure. I, I guess maybe a part of it is that, that I just don't like to be told what to do sometimes. You know what I mean? But, but uh, literally, to be completely honest with you, I just forget. 
Yeah. Right. And, and I'm walking out because I'm used to walking out like a regular person would and, and yeah. breathe the air. So I'm yep. walking out and then there's like, Hey, where's your mask? Like, Oh, um, I don't wear one. And then I have to explain why I don't wear one, <laughs> you know, and I'm trying to, I try to be as nice as possible to everybody, you know, and just say, Hey, this is why and they're like, well, you're stupid or whatever. <laughs> I'm like, Oh, well, I'm so sorry that I am. My yeah. apologies. And I keep right on walking. I, I, I mean, <laughs> I could get pissed off, but I, that's not going to get me anywhere. So I try to just, even keel it and take off. Yeah, well, uh, I think uh, I've heard a good observation. I think it was God Charlie or Midnight Mike, one of those guys on the union were saying how, you know, they were, or I think it was Midnight Mike said he wears a mask because all the security cameras are going to pick out all the people that aren't wearing masks and those are going to be the first <laughs> ones on the trucks, dude. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they know but but now they got, they got this technology that, that'll uh, figure out your face no matter what you're wearing. Exactly. Right? Yeah. If you've got uh, shades on or a mask, it doesn't matter. They'll look right through that and know who you are, which is yep. nuts. That's or the new like, reality we have to live in, I guess. Totally. Even just like the heat signatures on your body, just the way your body gets Right, right, body. right, right. Look at that from like outer space and tell where you're at, dude. Like, it's like, <laughs> man, like that stuff that we know that they have is just probably 30 years behind what they actually have, man. I mean, exactly. that's, just, that's just the name of the game. Like, I know that. Like, have you heard of the, 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 the laser that they can that, that shoot at the bag of chips experiment? Have you seen that? No, nah, I didn't, man. Tell me about it. What's up? Okay, so you can look it up on YouTube. They actually, it's a pretty common thing. So what they can do is, like, in the experiment, they have, like, a bag, empty bag of potato chips, right? Mm. And from a distance, they shoot a laser on it, and they read the vibrations on the bag of chips from two people having a conversation, and they can extrapolate that. And just from the vibrations of the bag of chips, they can pull what they're actually talking That's about. That's from like a mile? From like a, literally from like a mile away. They could like yeah. shoot a laser at your window and just read the vibrations on your window. Insanity, you know, bro. You're saying. <laughs> that is insane. Like, get out of here. That's get insanity. Here. They've probably yeah. had this for decades upon decades upon decades, right? It, it always takes me back to Bin Laden, right? I always think about, anytime I hear about technology like this, it reminds me about Osama Bin Laden. We're closing in on 9-11, right? Yeah. So, um, um, I remember when they quote unquote captured Osama bin Laden, killed him in yep. Pakistan. Yep. Right. And uh, the CIA was literally in the compound right next door to Osama bin Laden, whoever the hell that was. Yes. Right. And they, they said this on PBS. I think it was, um, damn it. I forget the guy's name. I know Barack Obama for sure. There was another one, Leon Panetta, who used okay. to be the head of the CIA. Yeah. Um, both of them said that they never had a positive identification on Osama bin Laden. Mm -hmm. They were that close and they saw some guy out like in the field, quote unquote, farming or something, but they yeah. could never identify him 100% as bin Laden. Even when they broke into the compound, they yeah. still didn't know. And this is admitted. This isn't conspiracy theory. These guys yeah. admitted this right on film. <laughs> we can go search it up. Um, but they have technology that can spot a penny from space. So, I mean, I don't understand it. You're li you're living right next door to this guy for months. Okay. It wasn't a one-time thing. I mean, they were staking him out forever. Whomever this person was, cause I don't believe it was bin Laden, but, yeah. um, they, they knew they were never able to identify him. And bin Laden was a, was a pretty tall guy from what I understand. He was six foot something. I mean, it, he's Pretty easy to pick out of a crowd. Oh, look, it's Osama bin Laden, the world's most wanted terrorist. <laughs> we just can't figure out if it's him or not. You know, um, but they have all this technology that can do it. it, it it's just a bunch of nonsense. You know, it's just, a, it's, uh, I don't, sometimes I try to rationalize in my mind why these people lie to us as much as they do. I don't, I don't get it. Mm, yeah, we can get into all that, man. Like that reminds me too of the infamous, I know uh, you're a, uh, you're a, uh, a follower of Bill Cooper, right? And so yeah, yeah. this June 25th broadcast on uh, Hour of the Time where he's like, nice. all right, so CNN walked into Osama bin Laden's cave and interviewed yes, yes. <laughs> the whole world and all the intelligence agencies and all the military with all the resources in the entire world are looking for this one man and CNN walks in there into his cave. If you believe that for a second, you're a damn fool. You know, and then he says, yeah, yeah, yeah. whatever's about to happen that they blame on Osama bin Laden, don't you believe it for a second? And he said that on June 25th, 2001. Man, so. and, and, and then <laughs> I, I believed it hook, line, and sinker, man. That's the sad yeah. part about it, man. Yeah. 2001 went down, I mean, the, the World Trade Center. I believed it. And, and yeah. he, I said, it's Osama bin Laden that did this. I remember turning to my friends. I was with two of them in Midtown, in Midtown, when, um, 
when the towers were hit. Wow. We could see them. One of them collapsed in front of my freaking face later on, right? But I'm looking at them burning, and I turned to my friends, and I told them, this was Osama bin Laden that did this. Mm-hmm. I didn't know who the hell Osama bin Laden was from a freaking hole in the wall. So true. Yeah. <laughs> I was just saying it was because that's what was programmed into my brain to believe. Totally. And then like a few years later, you know, I got put on and somebody told me what was going on. And I went in there to, to they said, go to InfoWars, go to DavidIke.com. Yeah. And I'm like, sure, I'll go on these sites and I'll, I'll, I'll tear this apart in a few minutes. I'll be right back. And uh, that's not the way it worked out. You know, like <laughs> I was... <laughs> I had to apologize. You know, I was like, hey, I'm so sorry for, for being a dick about this pretty much. Um, yeah, I was probably wrong. And yeah, I was wrong altogether. But, but I bought this, you know, I, 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 was, I was kind. And, and, and I, I think that's part of the reason why I take it so freaking personally, because I, I am the example of what they wanted, you know? The, I mean, to the T, guys, I, I am that. And then I found out and I'm like, oh my God, oh yeah. my God, yeah. oh my God. You know, <laughs> it just kept yeah. getting worse, you yeah. know? Um, but, but yeah, man, um, I was exactly what they wanted to get out of the American public. Totally. Yeah, I, I can completely agree. I think all, of us, all three of us are in the exact same boat. You know, I think we came to this journey in different ways, you know, but that was mine too. That was mine too. Tower 7 was one of the earliest things that really kind of woke me up like, I had no idea. And even to this day, you can t- talk to almost anybody out there and say, did you know a third tower fell on 9-11? And they have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah, totally. You know, totally. hopefully that'll change soon. You know, I don't know if you watched the most recent Union of the Unwanted. Uh, Richard Gage, dude, was on there, Architects and Engineers for 9-11 Truth. They've got a big uh, documentary called Seven coming out here, all, like feature length, you know, big production. Focusing on Tower 7, trying to bring some awareness to it, man. And I think that that's... You know, I think now yeah, a couple of court cases going. Yep, so, there's a couple yeah. big court cases. I think in the UK, just to get yeah. out of this jurisdiction from families of victims of, of 9/11, it's just yeah. a lot, dude. It's crazy. You know, we definitely wanted to hear your perspective on that too, man. It's crazy that you were there that day. I can't even imagine, dude. Can't even imagine. And yeah, I man. Think, I, I, I'm sorry. Go ahead, bro. What's up? No, I I was just gonna say I I think it's interesting. You know, New York has been. We had 9-11 there, and now here we are 19 years later, and we were kind of the hotbed of the COVID for the start of the U.S., you know. Like, I, I want to hear how, how is it different? Are people more awake now, or are they just – is it the same? I mean, I know it's got to be a different feeling. I think at 9-11, people kind of came together. Right. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't feel like that, that's – feels like we've separated. Absolutely. The, you know? Absolutely. One, 100%. I think you hit it right on the head. Um. It's always New York, right? They always beat us up, man. They use us as guinea pigs out here, man. Yeah. You know, um, to the point where everybody's leaving. People, people are taking off. Yeah. I think it's t- 8 to 10% of the population of New York has left, according to some st- statistics, and they're not coming back, right? Yeah. And uh, to, to be honest with you, if, if I didn't have so much tied up here, I'd be gone. Yeah. You know, and, and it's only a matter of time before I leave anyway. I, I love this city. I love New York. I love the Bronx. It's all I've ever known. But um, it's time. <laughs> it is time to get out. You know, in a, 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 any major city where anybody watching this that resides in a major city, let's go. We got to get out like soon. I don't know how soon you can do it. I can't do it like overnight. It's going to take me at least two years yeah. to get my stuff together and get out of here. And, and, and my mom and, mm-hmm. and my grandma and so many people that are here. We have a unit. We have a working relationship and we're a family you know and we have stuff that we rely on each other for which makes it a lot easier to live but but um we got to get out i'm not leaving them behind you know what i mean so i got to figure all this stuff out and and how it's going to work but um on september 11th man i remember it like it was yesterday man because like somebody handed me behold a pale horse way before september 11th it was i think in 1998 one of my friends was like you you'd love this he's like here read this <laughs> And, um, and I started reading it and, uh, yeah, he was right. You know, I, I fell for it immediately. Like I just, Oh my God, what is this? Mm-hmm. You know, um, a lot of stuff is wrong in that book, but I still love it and I keep it and I read it from time to time. Um, pale horse rider guys. Let me not forget that. that that's that book that Mark Jacobson wrote about Bill Cooper. It is fantastic. Great. Fantastic. You must. You, if you're a Bill Cooper fan or anything, you must yeah. read it. 
everything okay. that went down. I- incredible. Right. Yeah. 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 Yep. yeah. But um, I think you can only find it on audiobook right now because the hard co- the hard copy is like a hundred bucks for some reason. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, books I want to get a hold of that are like that too. A lot of the yeah, yeah, yeah. Fritz Springmeyer ones, all the uh, which Bloodline. one? Bloodline, Bloodlines of the Illuminati. Uh, the, I've I've been uh, PDF version reading the um, Illuminati formula to create a total mind control slave. Uh, Springmeyer, dude. That's, that's Fritz, right? Yeah, that is. I had Fritz on the show once. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah. And, and I back never back. bothered to ask him about getting books from him. I got to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally hey, good. you got any books? You know? <laughs> He's Morgan too. He's got quite an interesting story, dude. Like, damn. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to. I'll, I'll go back and listen to that episode here, dude. That's awesome. That was a long time ago. It was about a year and a half ago. But um, I was I I was coming into work on 9-11. I remember it like it was yesterday. And I was always about a minute or two late to this job that I had. I was really young. And um, my boss would always be like, hey, listen, man, you got to get here on time. And I would tell him, I'm like, listen, man, I'm two minutes late. I'm here. Don't worry about it. I got it. I got the job. The job is done. And he's like, no, no, no. You got to get here on time. So... It was uh, 9 o'clock I was supposed to be at work. I remember 9.05 getting to work and punching in. It said 9.05. I had no idea what was going on. And I was like, damn. That's all I kept thinking on the train because I, I left my house on time. You know, and I, I should have been good. And I'm like, I can't freaking catch a break. This guy's going to get in my ass. And um, 9.05, I punch in and then I walk into... Um, where my, my station was, my desk. And, uh, you know, televisions are going off and, you know, the plane flew into the towers. And the first thing I said, I was like, what an idiot pilot. How do you do that? Like, this is, the, this is what was going on in my brain. Yeah, totally. This is how far off I was. Yeah. Okay. And I'm like, man. And then, and then uh, they told me, oh, a second plane hit. And I'm like, oh, okay. Um, that's... That's not good. I'm like, that sounds like some type of attack. Right. So I, that's when I finally started, you know, and it, the, the building was evacuated. I was, li- I was in 200 Park Avenue. That's uh, the MetLife building right now. So I'm sure you guys know which one it is. The one that gets blown up during movies all the time. It used to be the Pan Am building. Um, so that's where I was working at the time, right on Midtown. We walked off, headed to the corner and you could see the towers on fire. Both of them, they're just on fire. And I'm like, wow, wow. So that's it. It was, it was the end of the day. Nobody went back to work, but no trains were running. We had to walk up to 86th street to catch the train. I went down to the center, to the world trade, world trade centers. I went down in that direction. My girlfriend, who's my wife now, uh, was, um, working on 23rd, 22nd street. And I wanted to pick her up and my cousin who handed me Behold a Pale Horse. No, no, no. I handed him Behold a Pale Horse, right? Five years later, four years later, after, two, after uh, September 11th, 2001, he's the one who tells me everything you know is wrong. Go to David Icke, go to um, Alex Jones and go see what's going on. He was the one who told me. Yeah. So, you know, I gave him Behold a Pale Horse. I put it down. He kept going. And then he tells me, hey, get it together. But he was, wor- he was going to school right across the street from the trade centers. And uh, I went to high school right across the street from the trade centers. And I had my first job across the street from the trade centers. That area is very, you know, special to me. I did a lot there. My cousin was down there. So I'm like, I'm going down to the trade center. I didn't make it that far. But when I was at 20 something, I want to say, or in the teens, one of the towers collapsed, collapsed in front of my face. Damn. And everybody scattered like rats and you hear people screaming and crying. I literally thought we were being, you know, like planes were flying over and shooting us at the time. I was just running to try to catch cover. And then I saw what was going on and I'm like, oh, it's the tower. Okay. Damn. You know, um, I still kept going down and then the police stopped us. Yeah. You know, and, and they didn't, they didn't let, let us go any further. So I, I picked up my wife and uh, we took off and went back. To, so we walked from a good, a good, uh, a good, a good slice of the island of Manhattan. We walked from to get to 86th Street and then came over to the Bronx, you know. And um, everything was very somber and like, like you said, you know, uh, everybody was together for a while, everybody, you know. And but this with with uh, with COVID, it's it's very different. It's very different out here. There's 
so many different points of view. You know, some people are like, yo, put your mask. A lot of people are like, put your mask on. Some yeah. people are like, no, I'm not putting my mask on. Some people are like, this isn't a thing. You know, uh, I'm, not, I'm not dealing with this crap. I just came from the pizza shop before I, I, I hooked up with you guys. Because I didn't make any dinner. I was busy doing something. Let me go get some pizza. So I got pizza for everybody. And uh, the guy, the guy making the pizza is like, yo, this is a bunch of bullshit. He t- <laughs> Can I curse? I'm sorry. Yeah, you're good, dude. You're good, dude. <laughs> He's like, this is a bunch of bullshit, you know, because I, I walked in without a mask. Again, not on purpose. I would have respected them, you know, but I, I just, I walked in without a mask and um, I forgot, you know, I just, so I walked in and he's like, so I apologize to them. Some people take this very seriously out here, right? Because there's a lot of things going around in the alt media. People talk about. Uh, who cares? What? Why are you being respectful towards the, towards these people? Here in New York, it's a bit different, right? We got hit kind of hard, and uh, I live in a predominantly uh, um, Latino and African American neighborhood. Even though we do have Italians and Albanians here, right? we have some really good pizza here, uh, oh, yeah. not not far down the block here, run by Italians. It's fantastic, and that's why I was talking to. You know, but I have to be very careful what I say to people because people will take that shit seriously, you know, because their grandmother died, you know, or their uncle caught something, you know. So I'm not I'm not in the business of telling people, man, screw you, you're wrong. I, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to wear that mask. And, and then meanwhile, they're grieving because their mother's got, you know, and I'm, you know, whatever we think of COVID, whatever, whatever we think it is. People are dead here in New York. You know, people died for real. Whether it was the intubations, whether it was freaking the virus itself, whether it was, um, what do they call it, comorbidities, all that. People are freaking dead. People died, you know. And, and uh, I'm not trying to disrespect people out here for something like that, man. You know, and I, and I want to learn and, and I want to see what I can find. And, and you know, and I talk to them about it. Well, what happened, you know, and, and if they're willing to share, I sit down and, and I try to listen, you know, what, what happened? Did he have any comor- comorbidities? What was the experience in the hospital? You know, I just want to know, you know, and if they don't want to talk about it, I fully respect it. And if they tell me, listen, put on a mask. If I have it, I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, man, I'll put on a mask, you know, and people say that's counterproductive and you're wearing a muzzle and, and I get all those arguments, but uh, it's a very different situation if you're sitting here in the Bronx and then you look at the statistics of how many people died here. You know, at one point, I, I was going on my podcast saying that they were um, underreporting the numbers because I was a- aware of so many people that were going. And I was like, when is this going to touch me? I was like, man, it's only a matter of time before it gets into my inner circle. Thank the, thank the Lord that it didn't. But then I was like, you know what? They're, I kept looking and I kept reading. I'm like, oh, they're not underreporting the numbers. It's just... Uh, a lot of minorities dying from this. And, and the reasons that is, is because, you know, we have a lot of underlying issues. We eat crap. We're not very healthy out here, you know? So there, there's a lot of underlying issues that might've caused that, but, but that's what the statistics show anyway, you know? And I'm like, ah, oh, that makes a lot more sense to me, you know? Cause I talk to other people and they have nothing going on, you know? And, and you know, you guys are in the same business. We, we, we talk to people all over the world and nothing, Right. There's 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 nothing going on. So, I mean, what am I going to say to that, too? I'm not going to be like, oh, that's a bunch of bullshit. I know there's nothing going on. I'll take your word for it. Here in New York, it was something a bit different. That's all. Go ahead. What's up? I would say we have five deaths in our county. Yeah. Wow. Five over the six month period. And and they're they're COVID related deaths. They won't even right. tell you what they actually are. So, yeah, I can imagine it being certainly different in a place where there actually is death. We just mm-hmm. don't live in that place. But at the same time, I do think, you know, when I've heard about New York, you know, uh, I mean, that is where the, the venting people to death. That's, that's what we learned. We were hearing nine out of 10 people that go on a ventilator are dying. That's yeah, where yeah. Cuomo, uh, you know, opened up the nursing homes and flushed all the people that had the COVID into the nursing homes. And right. that's something I, I'm interested in, too. How, how are people feeling about Cuomo these days? Because, you know, I mean, if I, were, if I were in New York, I would be pissed. <laughs> I'll tell you a story about me and me and uh and your boy Andrew Cuomo, man. Um <laughs> I bumped into that dude one time. I was living in Parkchester, uh section of the Bronx, and he was running for controller. 
early on. And I knew who he was. I remember his father was uh, the governor here in New York. He's a career politician. Sure. You know, he, he lives off of his daddy's last name. And I saw him. And uh, this must have been 2005, 2006. And he was, you know, talking to people or whatever. And I went right up to him. Uh, I remember telling my wife, I was like, hey, listen, um, Andrew Cuomo's out there. Let me, give me a second. I'm, I'm going to pick up my pad and my pen and go talk to him. <laughs> so yeah. I'm like, hey, what's up, Mr. Cuomo? He's like, hey, what's going on? He starts talking to me. And I tell him, I'm like, listen, um, I brought out this article from, uh, I think it was uh, Yahoo. It was Yahoo News. Um, the Associated Press. That's what it was. It was through Yahoo, but it was the Associated Press. And it talked about drills on, uh, on 9-11. Right. And, uh, and I was talking to him about 9-11 and I was like, did you know there were drills during 9-11? He's like, no, nah, those are crazy conspiracy theories, man. So I pulled out the article and I tell him, I'm like, but so, so you're saying the Associated Press is peddling conspiracy theories. And he just looked at me and he goes, um, it was nice talking to you. Thank you very much. And walked away. Oh, yeah. And his people got right in my way. And that was the end of it. So th that was my, my, the beginning of my love affair with Andrew Cuomo. I am not a fan. Okay. I've, I've never been a fan. I'm not going to be a fan. Uh, not my deal. Here, people, people here in New York are, for the most part, very different. And uh, they're happy with him uh, in a lot of ways. You know, um, I, I find myself, I mean, this is just, this is the story of my life. I find myself in the minority of just about everything. But, <laughs> but, um, but people love this guy, so at least the, the people that I know. You know, they, they love him. They were like, look, he's coming out swinging against Donald Trump early on during the COVID thing. When, you know, he, all he did was insult Donald Trump for, I don't know, I mean, for day after day after day during these COVID uh, uh, updates. That's all he did was sit there and make fun of Donald. So um, people loved it, man. They were like, look, he's coming out swinging for us. Yo, we, you know, we, he's defending us. And I'm like, man, whatever you say, brother. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, at, at one point, you know, uh, I, I would think that if they would have ran Andrew Cuomo against, against uh, Donald Trump in, in a nationwide election, I think he could have beaten him at one point. Yeah. Just because there was, there was so much uh, momentum behind him about the nonsense he was talking. Things have changed now. But here in New York, I, I think people still like him. People really hate de Blasio, though, um, who's our mayor. They yeah. hate him. But, uh, but they like Cuomo still. So Interesting. I don't know, we're, we're weird out here, guys. Yeah, I mean, he's got the, the propaganda arm with his brother on CNN, so he's got that, you know, you know they're just patting each other's back, right? Right. But, uh, you know, speaking of just... Survived. Speaking of, yeah. <laughs> Somehow they both survived COVID. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, man, like, I, love, I love this because, like, you know, there's a lot of animosity over here towards our governor as well, Governor oh, yeah. Kate Brown of Oregon, right? And mm. it's insane, too. So we just over the last, like, three months... It's been a huge statewide push for uh, to have a recall, right? So mm -hmm. it requires, uh, you know, petitions to be signed. They had a, a two hundred eighty thousand signatures were required by a certain deadline, and it was a massive push, dude. Like we were, you know, we went down and signed. We were all over social media, like we should, you know, and we're trying to get her recalled. And it was due on Monday, and the counts came in, and they were three thousand signatures short. But I think that that's <laughs> garbage. I don't think that, I think that was and. I think that she tampered with it. It's total tampering. She had, was she had, so I was going to say, some of those people collecting signatures worked for her and they lost them. Oh, yeah. 100%. Yeah. 100%. There's, no, there's no doubt in my mind. Signatures. If you look at her character, there's no way you can deny that. She's, she's. <laughs> it's a larger issue, though. I mean, I mean, it's, it gets to the overall issue is do we really trust voting in general? I mean, in our lifetimes, I mean, we've seen the Al Gore, George W., you know, I mean, I mean, we've seen Bernie get kneecapped, the, you know, a couple. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 2016, you know, and, uh, you know, so I, I don't know how much I buy in anymore, honestly. Like, it's, it, you kind of put your eggs in a basket and it's, <laughs> they do what they want. I get it. They do what they want. Uh, they totally do. I, I, feel, I feel like the push here, though, I do feel like, I, I feel confidently that the push here was strong enough. I, I feel like we have the numbers. Oh, yeah. We totally, totally. have the numbers. See, I, and, I have and, no idea. I, I think have she no was idea scared. how many signatures were on that thing. I, I, yeah, there was definitely momentum, and I know Huge. a lot of people who signed. And, and I, plus, they were aiming for like 150,000 over, right, yeah. before they even turned it in, and yeah. they came up with 3,000. Sure. I don't know. And so. It's crazy. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah, yeah. 
I she mean, the reality, that, that, is, though, the reality is with that, though, is if we would have had enough signatures, it wouldn't have fucking mattered. That, that I am confident of, that she would not have been recalled. And no. because we do live in, in our state, I mean, the same thing, uh, Cuomo there, I mean, people love her. As much as we <laughs> see what's going on there is most of our state does like her. Like, mm -hmm. Let's be honest with ourselves. Mm -hmm. Like, um, so I, I don't think that would matter, but uh, yeah. yeah. Um, to I kind of want to see any. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, buddy. Come on. No, I was just going to kind of go into, uh, you know, w one thing, uh, you know, I know about you, Billy Ray, is like, you know, you're you're a wrestling fan, and I've heard you talk about uh, wrestling and just kind of the theater of wrestling and how that it, it plays out in politics and the similarities there. And I think it's, uh, uh, I I think there's a lot of similarities, a lot of oh, parallels. Yeah. And uh, the same thing. Oh yeah. <laughs> But I guess I, you know, I go back and forth, and you know, we're we're in an interesting time with, uh, you know, with Trump as president right now, and uh, I kind of go back and forth. There's, I think there's things I totally don't agree with him on. There's some things he does that I totally agree with on, and sometimes, but sometimes I think it's almost maybe like he's the puppet that they use, like when when we got hydroxychloroquine here, but we'll just have Trump announce it, and then the whole world just attacks it. And then we never get we never get hydroxychloroquine. Like you know, I, I think in some ways, even the the issues that I think he's right on, I feel like it's almost used against us because they can just immediately attack it. What do What do you think about Trump? And what do you think about kind of like how is he a puppet or is he? What do you think of him? I think um, I get a, a lot of shit for this. I don't care. Um, oh. I grew up with Donald Trump, right? Yeah. Uh, I, I used to listen to him on Howard Stern all the time. I love Howard Stern. Yeah. Um, I, I even bought Sirius Satellite Radio to, to listen to Howard Stern back in the day. And Trump was a guest all the time. And uh, he was n not a good person. <laughs> you know, he just wasn't, right? So w when he came up in 2016, and he was running for president. I thought this was a freaking joke. Mm -hmm. I couldn't. I couldn't believe it, right? And but one time he brought in all the women that uh, Bill Clinton had allegedly raped, and he brought them into a debate. And he caught. I do. You guys not familiar with that? If if you guys aren't familiar with that, you guys got to go look it up because it was a moment, right? Okay. That they were all sitting in in the audience at the debates. Okay, he brought them there. Okay. And I was like, whoa, the ball's on this guy. Whoa. And I was like, All right, maybe this is something I need to watch. Yeah. Right. And I started looking, I started looking and I'm like, well, I'm not voting for him. That's for sure. So I, I sat it out. I mean, I don't vote period. I've only voted once in my life. I've, I've never been motivated to do it by anyone except for Ron Paul one time. Hell yeah. Right. So um, I wasn't voting for Donald Trump. I, I, did, I needed more. I needed a lot more. And, and ultimately, I'm glad I didn't. I'm not a fan of Donald Trump. Um, I'm not a fan of the left-right paradigm. Yep. I'm not a fan of it. Exactly. And I think what, what happened here is if, if we believe in a new world order, if we believe in a deep state, right, or a government within a government that actually manipulates things, the controllers, the elite, whatever, right, let's say that that is a real thing. Um the best play that they could have made was putting Donald Trump in the White House. He is, in my opinion, the great divider. I've never seen anything like this in my life. I've never seen anything like it on, on either side, right? He is, he's, there's a Trump derangement syndrome, which is a real thing. Yeah. You know, I, I might've had a hint of it at some point, right? And so I, I'm not gonna say it's not a real thing. It, it's a real thing. But there's also Trump enablement syndrome. That's what uh, Don Jeffries says. Shouts to Don Jeffries. Um, uh, Trump enablement syndrome. No matter what he does, no matter how deplorable or wrong it is, people will support it. It's a complete divide. It's reinvested everybody into the left-right paradigm. Yep. There's, there's the Democrats that want anyone but Trump and now there's the Republican Trump, uh, the Republican Trumps, because Trump has taken a hold of this party. It's, he's made it his. 
the convention was a, there was a Trump talking on every night. You know, they, it was the Trump show for the Republican National Convention. You know, um, so now it's those who are with them and those who are against them. Red and blue bloods and crips, a straight up divide yep. in the country. Not only has it divided the people, but it's also divided the alternative media. Yeah. It's also divided us because we have the Q1 on people. Mm-hmm. And then we have the just the pro-Trump people and we have the anti-Trump people. I don't think we have pro-Biden people in our movement. Yeah. I, I so still have, we'll just leave it out. We have anti-Trump people that are voting for Democrat because of the anti-Trump ticket, but right. pro-Biden, is that even a thing? I don't understand. No, I, I don't think that's a thing, no. <laughs> but, um, but it's divided us, you know, and um, I go back to the way Trump was elected, you know, and I think of Cambridge Analytica, and uh, the 5,000 data points on every American through social media that they were able to pull. And what did they give this guy? You know, they, they gave him a, a script. If we're not familiar with Cambridge Analytica, I'll give you just a little bit. Totally. Um, it's this company, Steve Bannon, you know, um, the Mercers started over in, in the UK in Cambridge University. They called it Cambridge Analytica. It was a, a part of SCL Group. Um, which is also linked to British intelligence. Um, And uh, they were able to come up with a plan to get a person elected. It wasn't necessarily Donald Trump. It was going to be Ted Cruz. That's who who they chose uh, originally. Ted Cruz fell back for some reason. I don't know what that reason is. And they brought in Donald Trump. And I think Donald Trump was perfect for the role because of the pro wrestling aspect that you brought up. Uh, Donald Trump can, and I've, I've said this many, many times, but he can cut a promo better than anyone. He'll stand there and he will talk forever and ever. And it won't be boring. You know, it'll be captivating as hell. It'll be funny sometimes too. You know, he's, he's got so much charisma. It oozes out of Donald Trump. And that's all you need, right? To bring the people in. You know, he gets them, he gets them chanting, you know, lock her up. He's not going to lock her up. He said he wasn't. He said he wasn't the, during the first a few months of, his, of the presidency after he had already won. He said, they're good people. I'm not going to lock them up. I'm not, I'm not locking up the Clintons. They're good people. But yet people are still yelling, lock her up at his rallies. And does he stop them? He doesn't because he likes the energy he gets. He knows what to say. He's like, we're going to lock her. And everybody screams up at the drop of a dime. That's what The Rock does, right? In, in the WWE, that's what he used to do. If you smell, is what The Rock oh, man, is cooking. The rock, man. Right? That's what they would say. So there's a lot of similarities there. Yeah. You know, and um, this is why I'm not a fan of Donald Trump. Cambridge Analytica gave him a lot of this stuff, a lot of the script, you know, a build a wall, drain the swamp, which he, you can make an argument that he hasn't done. You know, um, some people say, think he has. I, I think there's a bunch of swamp dw- dwellers all over this. Totally. Like he's, he's got more CFR, Council on Foreign yeah, Relations. Yeah, Council on Foreign Relations. And then there's the, the, the Council on National Policy. I can't yeah. even pretend to go into this with you guys. My, my boy, John Brissom, just continues to harp down that road. You know, yeah. the Council for National Policy and a, and a bunch of other stuff. The, the other side that they've never shown us. Yeah. The think tanks of the right. You know, and, and then you start thinking about it. And I, I've, watched, I, I've watched Alex Jones religiously since 2005. I, tra- I, tra- I trailed off for a bit yeah. when he went pro-Trump, but I've come back now with the whole COVID thing. Yeah. He's never mentioned the CNP once, but he points our finger over to the Council on Foreign Relations all the time. Yeah. Anybody in the truther community knows all about the Council on Foreign Relations. Yeah. We know all about the Bilderberg Group. We know yeah. all about Bohemian Grove. We don't know about the CMP. Yep, I'm, I got to admit, I got to kind of, looks like I have something to research now. Um, Mike Pence, straight out of the CMP. Okay. You know, uh, Donald Trump had to give a speech in front of the CMP before he became president of the United States. There's another secret uh, think tank on top of that called Lasser Kel. I knew nothing about that. It's the equivalent of Bilderberg. It's just okay. for the right. Okay. But we don't know anything about it. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they haven't told us any of this. Why? It's like lying by, you know, by exclusion. They exclude certain things. They don't tell us the full truth. They're not showing us both sides of the coin, but we think we're informed. And this is me here too. Like, I have no freaking idea. I'm sitting here weaving through this and I'm like, really? Really? (laughs) Like, how come I didn't know this? I've been, I've been doing this for X amount of time. 
I knew yeah. nothing about this. Yeah. You know, and uh, that's the deal with that. Like, I'm just to fall back a bit and let you guys get in here, man. I'm, I'm, I'm not a fan of Donald Trump, man. I'm not. I think he's the great divider. Um, and while he may do some things right, you know, every you can make that argument for a lot of presidents. The things that continue, we got to look at the things that continue, and that's uh, the military industrial complex, mm -hmm. the technocracy. It continues. There is no slowing down in any of that. That continues. They will let us have a couple of issues, you know, th the softball issues back and forth. They'll, they'll let us talk about that. They'll, they'll even let us make some change. But at the end of the day, the war machine is not going to stop. The bombs have continued. The invasions uh, of, of countries and trying to destabilize and, and uh, military coups on, on, uh, on elected officials in other countries, that, that doesn't stop. That continues. And, you know, as far as the technocracy goes, he said, give me, give me 6G. He wanted 6G. You know, he said, I want 6G now. You look at, and now this vaccine is coming out, supposedly. They said by November 1st. Yep. That's yep. insane. November 1st. It takes, it takes what? Anywhere from seven to 10 years to have a, an effective vaccine, if that they, they still don't have a vaccine for the first coronavirus. Yep. So how are they going to come up with one for the second one just like that? I don't know. All questions. And this is all happening under Donald Trump. This is what we need to keep into account. Just me. Go ahead. Uh, I was just saying, as David Icke always says, like, you know, they, they, this vaccine, they're not making this vaccine. They're just waiting <laughs> long enough to give you this vaccine. That they have. <laughs> yes. Like, and, and who knows? You know, I, I don't. But um, I do think that is... When I come back to these things, though, even though I totally agree with I don't want to jump into the left-right paradigm, there are these mm. fundamental issues that I think that make me want to pick a side a little bit, and that's like the vaccine issue, you know? I mean, I think the Democrats are completely united against, like, they they want vaccines mandatory, mandatory, mandatory. for everyone mm -hmm. all yeah. the time. I, I think, the, at least, you know, they don't tell us, it, the, Trump's wording you know, he, he makes it sound like, you know, well, some people might not take the vaccine. You know, he doesn't ever said uh, he, there's Operation Warp Speed and all this. But he, he, the, the right is, let me step back. Like, as someone like that, my biggest red pill probably was the vaccine issue. And getting into that issue, I, I was more of a left guy before. But once I got into that issue, I like all of the people, I've had to, to meet with people. And, uh, you know, we try to, uh, meet with representatives, state representatives, and you know, get our you guys, the only the only people that listen to us are are the Republicans. Right. They're the only ones who will, who will hear us. And believe me, I don't like the idea, but at the same time, there's probably not a more important issue to me personally. Is you know, my my kids have had vaccines, and I've seen what they can do to my kids. You know, I don't say yeah. they're not going to injure every kid, but they're going to injure some. And absolutely, I, whatever the hell they're doing with this vaccine, it is not going to be pretty. You're not going to rush a vaccine out and. Six right. months, and, um, you know, not a good look. You know, my my, my eldest son, my first son, uh, we didn't want to vaccinate him, but I I I wasn't one hundred percent on. You know, I'm like, yeah, it's probably fine. These are what the doctors are telling us. They're telling us to vaccinate. Let's freaking let's vaccinate. Mm -hmm. so we gave him the first round of vaccinations. He had an adverse reaction, and we stopped it immediately. You know, and and he never got a vaccine ever again, up until very recently. Um, my second kid came out of the womb, didn't get touched for nine years. We were able to fight this off. Um, and uh, it wasn't easy. You know, people kept uh, the school system and a bunch of stuff. We had to go through a bunch of hoops to, to get it to be that way. But bo both of my kids are incredibly healthy, thank the Lord, you know, and um, uh, on, uh, I want to say April of 2019 or May, there was the, the measles outbreak here in New York. Oh, in New York. Yeah. Right. Yep. And, and it went through in the United States. It was, it was almost a primer for this COVID thing. Sure. Because it was the same reaction on a lesser scale. Yep. You know, they were like, no, nope, no, nope, we have to eradicate this, the spread of these measles that were going around, man. I, it was nothing. No one even died. There wasn't, there wasn't even a death recording. Um, for the latest outbreak, we as far as had, I can tell, I don't know. If it, we have not had a death from measles in over 10 years. So Wow, look at that. Look at that. But uh, what they went ahead and did was they um, made it mandatory. Yep. 
that every kid in New York had to have vaccines. Now, I, I am, um, I'm not fully against vaccines, but I am pro-choice, meaning yeah. I should be allowed, uh, not allowed, man, it's my freaking right, right? And it's your right, and it's everybody else's right to put whatever it is they want in their body or not put whatever it is they want in their body. Plain and simple, man. It's just sure. that simple. There's nothing, there's no, there's no other debate about it, yep. right? And, and, and it's, 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 um, it's uh, a sign of our slavery, in my opinion, of our ownership here in New York and eventually throughout the United States. But we had to do it. We had to comply. We had to either, either that or we had to leave. I couldn't put my, my kids in school. So my kid, uh, one of them is in his teens. The other one is, is, is nine. And their immune systems were strong, are strong. You know, we, we, we try our best to, to, to keep that the way it was. So I felt a lot more comfortable giving them the vaccines than when they were, you know, infants, when they don't have a, 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 an, an immune system adequate to fight any of this shit off. Yeah. You know, so, um, so I felt better about it, but I didn't feel good about it. I still don't feel good about it. And I still found another loophole. Mm. Um, Lord willing, it stays that way, but I, I found yet another loophole, so I've stopped doing what, what they wanted me to do, and now it's an even bigger fight because I don't have exemptions anymore. It's not, it's not legal. I'm, I'm arguing on a technicality, and I'll tell you guys off the air if you want to know, yeah. but I'm, I'm, I'm really arguing on, on a technicality at this point, and it's worked out to this point. Thank the Lord. Wow. Um, Dang, but it's, it's, it's not even a technicality. It's the real deal, but it's up to them to accept. That's all. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, and it's just so incredibly frustrating that it even has to come to that, man. Like, I just it drives me nuts. Yeah. yeah. So I'm not very optimistic, bro. To your point, yeah. that no matter who sits in the White House, that they're not going to try to slam this down our throat, man. Yeah. Let's look at it now. It's it, it, they they want to push this out in November. It makes me think that it's to win an win an election right now. Why why on, on November first? This is Donald Trump that's trying to push it really hard for it to come out. You know, and admittedly, he's admitted this, that this is what he wants. He, as soon as possible, we're going to get these vaccines. He's said it over and over and over again. So I'm not confident that by voting Donald Trump in, he's going to stop this for us. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm just not confident. And I'm pretty sure Joe Biden is going to be pro whatever the fuck they want to give yeah. us, man. Like, he's like, yeah, sure, we're going to do it for them, do it for them. And I, I want to think and I want to feel that Donald Trump is different. Sure. But... um. Yeah, the toxicity of the politics and the political atmosphere and the right-left paradigm as we're seeing it right now is to the point where it's like neither party on either side on any issue has the public's best interest in mind. They don't have anybody's interest in mind. It only The only thing that matters is the election. And every decision that they make has to go through a checklist of is this going to help us in the election or is this going to hinder us in the election? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that means, if you, that means letting your city burn because you think it's going to help your election, then that's what we're going to do. Yeah, you know? man, I mean, that's what they've been doing, unfortunately, man. It's just incredibly frustrating. Like we, we don't matter. Yeah. Is the, is the end of this. None of us matters. And, and what, what I want people to, I, I don't claim to know anything. Uh, you know, I'm learning just like everybody else. You know, it, it's, it's a process. But the only thing I want people to take from any time I speak, and I appreciate anyone that listens, I appreciate you guys having me on. I really do. You know, and, and all I want to know, all I want people to know is that we need to do this together, man. If we don't come together, yeah. there's no change. Nothing's going to change. And we need to realize that they are attacking us, all three of you, me, everybody else that's watching this, they're attacking us. Yep. You know, they're going to be fine. They're, they're, they're having their own little civil war and they're going to be good. Yeah. We're the ones that are going to prop this thing up and take the vaccines and fight their wars and cook their meals and make everything they want made. That's just the way it works. We need to realize our own self-worth and come together and push them off and say, no, we're not doing this anymore. And we can only achieve that together. It's the only way. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. So I know it's getting late over there, Billy Ray, but I wanted to ask you real quick. Uh, so what's the, just in the interest of just keeping this in the public consciousness, like what's going on with the, the, the Maxwell situation, Blaine Maxwell, like what's, What's your take on, on that? Or is there any new developments? Or is there any rumors in the streets of New York? Or what's going on? <laughs> yeah, man. You know, uh, in the streets of New York, tons of rumors about Gislaine Maxwell. Yeah. Um, 
No, man. Um, I've always, you know, I was really surprised that uh, they actually brought her in. Never thought I would see it. Yeah. You know, because I, I feel that she's more senior than Epstein. Right. Um, but they did. They brought her in. And um, it was the, um, the Southern District of New York that, that did it. Right. And uh, th- there, was, um, there was a little thing going around when she got arrested because uh, I f- it was the attorney of the Southern District of New York. I forget the guy's name. He got fired. 12 days before or 13 days before Ghislaine Maxwell actually got arrested. So, so people were saying, Oh, you see, look at, look at that. Like they fired Donald Trump and, and Barr fire this guy and there's progress. Boom, boom, boom. You know, they're looking at at it like that. It's kind of not the case, you know, um, the guy that got fired and and I'm, I'm, I'm blanking on his name right now, but uh, I'll, I'll get it at some point. The, attorney of, uh, of the Southern District of New York. He was the one that uh, filed the, the papers against the Epstein. He was the one instrumental in bringing in Epstein. He was also instrumental in bringing in Maxwell to the point where when they fired him, he would not leave. He didn't want to step down. He, he went ahead and appointed um, a, a, a lady that he was working with for about 20 years, went ahead and appointed her so she can continue that. So she was responsible for Ghislaine Maxwell's arrest. And, and get this, they're also responsible for the arrest of Steve Bannon. They're, they, this, whomever these people were, were going after the right people, in my opinion. You yeah. know, I, I could be wrong, like I said, but also responsible for Bannon and they get fired by, 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 uh, by Barr, by uh, Bill Barr. And uh, I think that person was uh, was given the post by Jeff Sessions. Mm-hmm. So it all, it all comes from the Trump administration. But uh, that that position has been instrumental. So I went ahead and followed them on Twitter just to see what's going on, because there's a lot of movement here in in the Epstein case and uh, William Barr. I mean, uh, uh, in uh, Steve Bannon. All these people. I'm very interested to see what's going on. I don't know exactly what's going on, but uh, it, it's making me, it's making me think. Like, yeah. what the hell is going on here? Why is there fire here? You know, and why is there animosity between the White House and this position? Because yeah. uh, they're they're responsible for a lot of these arrests, in my opinion. There's just so much cross pollination between it. You've got like Dershowitz, who was originally on the Epstein team, representing, you know, working on the impeachment team of Trump, and then Barr and his dad, who hired Epstein, like just back and forth on both sides. It's just, it's just so such a twisted thing. I don't know. I was just hoping you had any. I just wonder if you had any good intel on the ground over there. And so that that's good stuff that I'm gonna look into. You know, and well. now that you want it, I, I will go put my ear out on the streets and see oh, what yeah. I find, and yes. I will report back to you to find yeah. people. Love it. Awesome, Love man. It. Yeah. Cool. Billy Ray, man, I can't thank you enough for coming and joining us tonight. Well, how, do, how do the folks find you? Well, more importantly, we, we have to have you guys on the Infinite Fringe. Hell yeah. That happen. So we awesome. have to work that out at some point. I'm, I'd be very excited to have you guys, uh, hopefully live. That'd be fun, you know, right. and, uh, and you guys can interact with the people. And it's always fun to interact with the people. Do that. Um, yeah, man. Uh, thank you for having me, guys. It's, it's really been, been an honor. It went by really quickly, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, so I enjoyed it. I, I enjoyed it. Thank you for giving me a platform and, and, uh, thank you for doing what you guys do. I appreciate it, man. My name is Billy Ray Valentine. You can find me many places, um, on uh, TFR truth frequency radio, 7 PM Eastern live, uh, this Sunday, it's going to be me and Tony Atterburn talking about nine 11. We're going to do a nine 11 show early because September the 11th airs. I mean, September the 11th falls on a Friday. So, uh, we're going to do the, the 9-11 show a bit early. I'll be down in Ground Zero on September 11th, as I always am, uh, Lord willing. So if you guys are in the tri-state area, come down. And uh, if you see me, say, hey, you know, that'd be cool. Um, and I'm going to be out there for the majority of the day doing activism. Um, you can also find me on Apple Podcasts. That's the Infinite Fringe on Apple Podcast, And anywhere else you can find, find podcast. Uh, you can find me on America Unplugged. Over on Iconic, that's David Ike's and uh, Jamie Ike, uh, a platform that they built over there. And I, I go live there on Sundays. I go, my show airs there on Sundays. So you can get a, a double shot, Infinite Fringe and, and America Unplugged. 
And if you're, you're into pro wrestling, I do that too. I do way too many podcasts, guys. So awesome, dude. I love it. Yep. If, if you're into pro wrestling, man, WLR on hackerhameen.podbeam.com. That's the Wednesday locker room. I'm there from time to time. I'm going to dip out uh, for the fall because I got school to finish up and I probably won't have the time, but I'll fill in from time to time and, and I'll, I should be back in January, Lord willing. Also on hackerhameen.podbeam.com, the infinite fringe. You can find it there. And the Conspiracy Horsemen, it's four professional wrestlers talk conspiracy. Uh, Stevie Richards, Big Sal, Ben Hameen, the Greek, the Greek god Papa Don. That is all. Thank you yeah. very much. I appreciate you guys giving me time. No Thank problem, you, man. man. Yeah, have a great night, man. Well, that was awesome. Hell yeah, it was, dude. Oh, my God. Billy Ray, he's, dude, he's so down to earth. Like, yeah. I, I totally appreciate, like, I like to hear someone that's, that's kind of in, in New York, man. Especially where we're around 9-11. What, what great timing to have them on, yeah. you know? Yeah. Like, because we're at, the, we're at the, the next cycle of this, really, right? Yeah. You know, what is it, every 19 years? Something like that, yeah, man. Yeah. Yep. So, now we'll see what's in store. Yeah, I'm sure it's going to get I hope that they stay safe out there. On out. Yeah, but I hope, hopefully it gets out in time, man. Hopefully yeah. it gets out, man. I tell you what, man, and I didn't, we didn't get into it much, but, like, I really think, like, I mean, I was listening to, to Dean's most recent episode, too, and just, like, the idea that these cities are being torn down to become the next smart cities, I think, is is a real aspect of what's going on here. I think New York and Portland are, for sure, like, I think mm-hmm. that's part of the agenda yep. going on right now. And is we're going to have these new, this new control grid coming is um, these are going to be, uh, these are going to be the spots where they're going to, I ain't gonna be want to be anywhere near them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, dude. You know, yeah. I'm gonna want to be out at the river. That's yeah. where I want to be. Yep. They're laying know. the groundwork to make it so appealing. You know what I mean? It's like oh, this is yeah. this is the future. It's gonna be so convenient, and all your alarm clocks are gonna be synced up together. It'll Do be you so like nice. China? Yeah. Do you like China? <laughs> <laughs> Might start. I probably should start learning Mandarin right now, dude. Yeah, is what yeah, I'm saying. Yeah. Totally. Not a bad idea. God. Yeah. Not a bad idea. Yeah. Not a bad idea. Here's a funny thing too. Like you ask somebody, uh, you know, just. What do you think is the number one most spoken language in the world, right? And most people that I've done this to, they're like, well, English, duh, they speak English in like almost like all these countries, right? It's by far the most common. Not even close, actually. So the number one is Mandarin. Number two is Hindi, I think, uh, whatever, uh, what they speak in India. And then number three is English. And English is less than half of the total amount of people that speak Mandarin. So we're not even in the 50th percentile of the amount of people that speak Mandarin Chinese, just to give you some perspective. So, well, yeah, nice. crazy. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. All right, everyone. Well, I am Megan sitting here with Scott and Thank you to Billy Ray Valentine of the Ooh. Infinite Fringe podcast for sitting with us tonight. We wish all of you intellectual prosperity. Good night. Good night. Good night. Pew. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting.